you? Hello. You study dark matter, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this is a dark matter escape room. How about we team up and I'm sure together, Perfect. hopefully we'll be able to escape. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Great. That sounds fun. Let's go. In. Everyone should have one of these. You should five minutes just getting a handle of the place. Maybe you can tour it. Ah, good idea. No, no, that's a good idea because it moves it. Why did this? So you're you're searching for dark matter. That's how right. how are you doing that in your research? So what I'm doing is I'm looking at uh, sources very very far away. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, in the context of galaxy clusters, and these sources go very close to something called a fold critical curve. And if we look at those vicinities and we add little dark matter perturbers, then those substructures would shift tiny, tiny bit uh, this image position. So this is gravitational lensing, right? And we're using the fact that dark matter has a gravitational effect and it bends the light. So is this the key part? Yeah, that's yeah. the key part of it, yeah. Okay, thanks for that. Let's get back to this and we can chat Perfect. more in a minute. Yeah. And we got it. Doesn't say we can't. So what have we found so far? High frequency photons will reveal all. Look up at what you usually look down upon. Oh, we found the clue with the pie. Dude, what does the box say? I think that we, we haven't discussed that. Do we need a power source? Could that be this? Oh, that, that is have? absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, good idea. Oh, you found the key. That's awesome. And I remember reading in your research um, about the wiggly lines. Oh, yeah. And maybe you can tell me a bit more about why you're looking not for straight lines, but for these internal structures when you're looking yeah. at the way the light bends. Yeah, that's a wonderful question. So when we have a galaxy cluster, right, we have uh, in the gravitational lens, if we zoom in, it's something that's called a fold, mm -hmm. right? Um, if you have a smooth curve, whatever it is, if you zoom enough, it's gonna be a straight line, right? It doesn't have any kinks or cusps. But if we add this dark matter substructure, then the midpoints is gonna are gonna shift and the critical curve will be like a wiggly snake. And what's this telling us then about dark matter? Because there are all these different proposals for the kinds of dark matter that might exist. Mm. Uh, is there a specific model you're looking for? Or? Yeah. So we're, we're looking at two models. One is Lambda CDM, which is, oh wow. We'll come back to that. Yeah, we'll come back to that. Is <laughs> <laughs> that then telling us to look at in <laughs> yeah, that video? Definitely. We're looking at two models. Cold dark matter, what that tells us is that they structure all the way down. So we can have like dark matter subhalos that are like the size of a planet, but they're very tiny mass wise, right? However, warm dark matter would erase the substructure. So beyond a point, dark matter wouldn't clump into halos. That would result in less dark matter of halos, which for our purposes are less shifts in the image position. Okay, that'd yeah. be interesting. Yeah. All right, yeah. let's go and take a yeah. look at this place. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that there's Schrodinger's equation on that poster. I think we have used this poster because we used Curie yeah. to get in. How we use Heisenberg? We haven't used Heisenberg either. Maybe the electron configuration? The, or what about the, is this 1681? The 1681. You could try that. You could try it. Yeah. It worked? Let's go. So are we going to go with 92? All right. Hey. Wow. Okay. And so what impact does it have on your research that now you can use the JWST? Well, for these now we have uh, plenty full of data, a lot of data. And I think that that's very important to test uh, our kind of machinery or mechanism. And also it's good to constrain dark matter because the whole, whole point of this is to infer dark matter properties based on this tiny deflections or the wiggliness of the curve, right? So that makes the constraint much better. Mm, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. 
Right. Speaking of being able to see things better, yeah. we still have to escape. Yes. So yeah. let's get to that. Yes. There's something to do with this mosaic and the fact that there's high energy photons will give us a four digit code. This needs to be the last thing. We don't have time. Wait, where's the, why is the mouse not working? We have it. We have it. That's right. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> wow, that was really tense. Uh, it was really fun. What did? Uh, what was your favorite part of the escape room? My favorite part was like just the clutch finale. We had 20 seconds left. So close. So close. Yeah. yeah. I loved the remote participation. The fact that it took people. You know, we had to have really good communication skills, mm -hmm. which is a good uh, simulation of what it's like to be a scientist. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. yeah. I also really enjoyed uh, hearing about your research too. Thank you. I loved the fact that uh, I could learn more about how you're searching for dark matter, mm -hmm. since we're searching for it too in my research. But uh, the more information you find, the better it helps us to understand yeah. dark matter. Yeah, I think that particle physics and cosmology are like great together. And it's like, that's the future of the field in my opinion. And again, we need good communication. Yeah. So thank you so much for spending time with me. I'm really happy thank that we Thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you around the conference. Yeah. See you around. Bye bye. bye.